Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, in this video I want to talk about first principles of ICT trading. I want to talk about the framework, the principles of, of understanding the market and how you need to approach it if you want to be an ICT trader. Okay. Uh, first off, before I get into it guys, I want to give credit to um, this guy right here, uh, Michael, Inner Circle Trader. Uh, I did not come up with these idea ideas myself, guy. These are these are all the theories and the workings of Michael Huddleston. So, uh, and by the way, I'm not going to relay all of his information perfectly to you. So you need to go and do your own research. With that being said, uh, let's get to the uh, let's get to the let's get to the chart and let's talk about first principles. So, we're here on the ES, and I'm not going to try and spend too much time on this video, but uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. The basic premise of understanding ICT is that the market is driven, controlled, by artificial intelligence. Okay? That the market has been automated. All right? And now, what does that mean? It means that the algorithm or the automation in the market is performing a set of commands in order to achieve something. Now, if you accept that the market, as in the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, Russell 2000, most of the futures markets, if you accept that they are driven by artificial intelligence, then a lot of your other presuppositions, a lot of your first principles or things that you thought that were true go away. So number one, do orders matter? No. Okay. Does volume matter? No. Right. They don't matter anymore because you don't believe that's what's actually moving price. You believe that price is itself driven by artificial intelligence. And so a lot of the things that you thought before are going to go away. So is the market driven by a factor of supply and demand? No. Is the market driven by Elliott waves? No. Is the market driven by harmonic patterns? No. It's driven, in my opinion, and the first principles of ICT trading is that the market has been automated. The market is automated by artificial intelligence. So that changes your whole entire perspective on market mechanics, uh, what is happening with price, and, and let me tell you why. Number one, you, don't, you no longer would believe that if you accept that the market is driven by AI, then price has an objective. It is trying to do something, okay? It, it is always trying to achieve some sort of objective. And if you accept Michael's teachings, what is it trying to do? What is its purpose? In the end, it is trying to offer a fair and efficient price. A fair and efficient price is a price at which there, the market has given ample opportunity for you to buy and for you to sell. That is why it reprices up and it reprices down. That's why there are uptrends and there are downtrends. They're really not trends in the way that you think. It is just the market repricing itself to give ample opportunity, a fair and equitable opportunity for buyers and sellers at different prices. So notice the difference, right? In a, in a market that is not driven by artificial intelligence, right, prior to electronic markets, prior to when I believe that it was automated, an actual, a buy order would, would be what would drive the market up, okay? It, it, the orders were actually placed against each other, and it had nothing, you know, the, the whole idea of fair, fairness and efficiency had not come in yet and had not been automated. But as we got into the electronic market era, I believe that at some point intervention came in and said, no more. Um, we're going to control these markets and it's going to be driven by um, an AI framework. And that's what I think, that's why I think the, that computer science is the right way, to right way to frame and to look at our current market. Now, there are periods of what Michael refers to as manual intervention. That's when human beings actually are controlling it. And that would be like economic releases, FOMC, maybe some sort of, um, you know, geopolitical event, something unexpected. But in normal day-to-day, -day, like 95%, it, it is 
in my opinion, it's automated. So first principles would be the market is not random, right? Immediately, you know that the algorithm, the artificial intelligence is trying to accomplish something. And what it is trying to accomplish, it is trying to accomplish a fair and efficient price. So notice, for example, that the market is offering buyers first the opportunity to, to buy this range of price. Notice equally that it offers that same price on the way down. Notice that it's the same prices on the way up, and it's the same price on the way down. Now, why is that? Because it's trying to offer a fair and efficient price over time. Okay, not all at once, but over time. When the market is trading, you'll hear me sometimes say, well, the market is trading efficiently, right? Why, why does it do this? Why does price sometimes trade with hours and hours and hours and hours of overlapping candles? Why is it doing that? When you know that at any time, the artificial intelligence uh, is probably going to come back down. It's going to offer the same prices to the sell side. Because it's, it's offering an ample amount of opportunity for both buyers and sellers to place their bets, so to speak, um, in, an, in an act of fairness, from a, from a computer science standpoint, an act of fairness, ample time for traders to bet on the market going up and bet on the market going down. Okay. And that's why it's building up liquidity pools both to the upside and it's building up liquidity pools to the downside. Okay, when the market is trading efficiently like this, so the candles are overlapping, what is it, what is it doing? It is offering you the opportunity both to buy and to sell. Okay, that's, that's what it's doing. And then when price expands higher, all right, it's, seek, it's seeking liquidity because it's automated to do that. In my opinion, the market is automated to seek liquidity. Uh, it has been coded or programmed to do that. All right, so it's really not moving against you. It doesn't care about you at all. It's artificial intelligence. It's just programmed to run against liquidity. It is programmed to offer a fair and efficient price and to run against liquidity. And that's why it does what it does. That's why the standard deviations work. That's why the mathematical models, that's why they work. It would not work if price were not controlled. If it, if it were not artificial intelligence, a lot of the things that you see Michael Huddleston or myself do on the chart, a lot of the standard deviation projections, the time of the day, these things wouldn't work if it were not controlled, if it were truly a genuine like supply and demand market, right? If this were 1935, a lot of these concepts would, would not work. But they do uh, because you see over time that this market is driven by artificial intelligence, the price itself. And so a lot, that's the first principle. Uh, and so many people uh, will tell you that price is random. But when you accept that price is driven by artificial intelligence and it has objectives, that is, number one, to offer a fair and efficient price. A fair and efficient price over time. That's objective number one. Objective number two is to search and seek liquidity. It knows where the liquidity is. It's above old highs and it's below old lows. That's why it runs against old highs and old lows. It's seeking liquidity because it's programmed to do that. Now, knowing that the market is itself, right, price itself is driven by artificial intelligence does not mean that you're going to win every trade because you're not going to interpret what the artificial intelligence, wants, what it's trying to do right now uh, you're not going to interpret that information correctly. But a lot of the old ideas you have about orders mattering, about volume, supply and demand, all these things, they're all going to, they're antiquated, guys. They're antiquated ideas. They're antiquated. They're, they're 1930s. They're 1980s. Chart patterns, they're antiquated, guys. They stopped working when the market became controlled. When the markets became electronically uh, delivered, I'm fairly certain that pretty quickly after that, the powers that be automated the market. It's not always automated. So if there's an economic release, like for example, let's talk about why did the market do what it did on non-farm pair? And this is speculation, guys, it's all my opinion. Why did the market go straight up and straight down on, on non-farm payrolls? What, why would price do that? Okay, number one, let's go to our regular trading hours. The market is working in an inefficiently delivered price, okay? And so when you see on the regular trading hours, notice that, that the market had not given an opportunity for buyers or sellers in between the high of this candle, 
4,446 evens, and the low of that candle, 4,482 three quarters. Between those two price points, the market had not offered you an opportunity to either buy or sell. Therefore, the market started working back into that gap. In order to give you a chance to buy and sell, in fairness and in equity, to be efficient, right? To be efficient from a computer science standpoint, right? Now, obviously, if you're going short as the market's going up and, and you're trying to buy when the market's going down, you don't feel like it's fair and, equ and equitable. But in a grand scheme of things, as in, you know, looking beyond yourself and looking like what is price trying to do, it is fair and equitable. That's why it, go, that's why it fills in these inefficiencies. It's trying to be fair, trying to be efficient from a mathematical standpoint. So this was non-farm payrolls, right? Notice two stages, straight up and then straight back down. Now why would the, why would the powers that be want that? They're mitigating risk. They don't really know at this very moment what the Federal Reserve is going to do. The world runs on debt. The world runs on interest rates. The, the United States Federal Reserve rate drives everything. It drives everything. And so when you get an economic release that comes out, the powers that be, the real big money, the trillions of dollars, right, the people that have so much money they can automate the market, why would they want to run the market straight up and then run it right back down? Because based on their models, whatever, whatever computer science they're using based on the, the, the data that comes out from non-farm payrolls, they're, tr they're trying to mitigate risk. They don't really know what it means exactly at this moment what does that mean for the Federal Reserve going, going into the next FOMC? And so if the market it just goes straight up and then straight back down, they're mitigating that risk, okay? That's my opinion. Now, I think that when they are very confident about what the Fed is going to do, that's when they'll drive the market definitively straight up or definitively straight down, okay? But when they don't really know, the powers that be, the big money, like unbelievable amounts of money, so much money that they can automate the market, they, if they don't really know what the Federal Reserve is going to do, they'll run it right up and they'll run it right back down. So in the grand scheme of things, no change, right? Grand scheme of things, no change. So the first principle, just to recap, the first principle of ICT trading is that the market is driven itself, the price itself, and the time that it does what it does. Everything about it is driven by artificial intelligence. I'm not saying that, that I know that to be the truth by any sort of documents, guys. Just quick SEC and CFTC disclaimer. I, I have no like, proof of that. But I can tell you from a mathematical standpoint and from an intuition standpoint, it appears to be that way. And why? Well, the SEC chairman himself has mentioned it. Fair and efficient markets. Fair and efficient markets, guys. That's why it does what it does, in my opinion. So everything that you knew about the market or you thought you knew retail concepts they all go away supply and demand it goes away volume it goes away order flow it, it goes away because you know the orders don't matter orders don't matter they they don't guys it's payment for order flow scheme it's all automated by artificial intelligence it doesn't matter at all the only things that really matter are time price inefficiency and liquidity that's time price inefficiencies and liquidity the market itself, the, the algorithm, the AI, it is trying to deliver liquidity and it's trying to deliver a fair and efficient price over time. That's it. That's what it's trying to do. That's why it's not random. Okay? So, does that mean that you're going to win every trade? No. Everything about the basic fundamentals of day trading still matter, and that's responsible trading, not gambling, risk management, money management. All of those things are critical to your success. To my success, to your success, risk management, money management, you know, patience, discipline, all of those things are critical. But everything that you thought, if you want to be an ICT trader, everything you thought before has got to go. You have to accept that the markets are automated. Okay? So you're, you know that the market itself, which doesn't care about you at all, it's just a computer program. It's just a computer program, in my opinion. That's all the S&P 500. It's all the NASDAQ are. It's just a computer program. And what it's trying to do is it is trying to deliver price into liquidity 
and over time to deliver a fair and efficient price. A fair and efficient price. And so when you go in with that framework and you're looking at what price is doing, you're trying to ascertain, like, what do I think that the artificial intelligence that's driving price, what should it do next? You have to think, like, where has the market been inefficient and where is their liquidity? And that will give you a framework of, like, what, what should it do over time? Doesn't mean it's going to do it right now, but what should it do over time? That's the first principle, guys. So you'll notice, I don't need an indicator for that. In fact, an indicator would be distracting. I don't use cumulative delta. I don't use volume profile because I don't believe those things. Like from a fundamental perspective, from a first principles perspective, I don't believe those matter at all. I think that order flow doesn't matter. I think volume is nonsense. I think indicators are nonsense. Um, all of that stuff is nonsense. The stuff that matters for you, first principles of algorithmic theory um, and risk management, money management, patience, discipline, healthy habits, those are the things that matter. So anyways, guys, that's first principles of ICT trading. I hope that um, this helps you get a framework for what it is, You know, a belief that the market has already been automated 99.9% .9 of the time except for when there are like, you know, unexpected events or economic releases, at which point human beings do take control for a very small amount of time. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on the first principles of ICT trading. Bye.